Assalamualaikum and very good day. Today we are going to discuss about human reproductive system 4.2 subtopic and in this topic we will learn about identify the structures and function of the male and female reproductive system, communicate about the physical changes that occur during puberty, compare and contrast the male gamete with the female gamete in the reproductive system. So, in this human reproductive system, as we know that human you know, divided into two male and female. So, each male and female have their own reproductive system. So, in human reproductive system, divided into male reproductive system and female reproductive system. So, both system must uh, combine together in order to reproduce a new offspring. So, if one of this reproductive system is malfunction, so the reproductive system in human will be malfunction also. So, uh, in the first uh, objective or learning objective, for human reproductive system, we will learn about the structures and what is the function of every structures in the male and also in the female reproductive system. I hope that uh, all of you can uh, pay attention to the, the to the what will be discussed after this. Now we will look into the male reproductive system. Okay, as being given in the diagram here, shows that male reproductive system that at the center of the male body and the organ that involve in the male reproductive system, as we can see from this diagram, first we can see uh, the first one is a urinary bladder, this part, and the side view is this one. This is a urinary bladder. The second one is seminal vesicle. Okay, seminal vesicle, if we look at the front view of male reproductive system, so the location is here. And if we look at the side view of male reproductive system so the location of seminal vesicle is at behind the prostate gland okay. so the third structure or third organ here is prostate gland okay. the position is here under the urinary bladder fourth is sperm duct so you can see here sperm duct starting from the testis and then going to this part. Yeah. So this is the ju junction that meet the fluid from the other part. Okay, so this sperm duct from the side view. Next is a urethra. So urethra here inside the penis. So okay, this urethra, if you can see, coming connected to the urinary bladder. Yeah. So this urinary bladder. Okay, what is a urinary bladder? Urinary bladder is a place for the accumulation or to store uh, urine that being filtered from our kidney. So this is where our urine will be stored before it will be released through our penis. Okay, so this is the structure. So from the urinary bladder, so we have a sperm duct here. And this is the interconnection. Okay. This is urethra, sorry. 
Okay, this is a sperm duct. So sperm duct and and urethra will meet to each other at this part. Yeah. Okay, next is scrotum. Okay, this is scrotum. So scrotum is the outer part that protect the testis inside. Okay, this one. Scrotum. And then inside the scrotum, we have testis here. Okay, so testis will produce sperm and sex, male sex hormone. And the last part, the last structure is penis. So this is the outer part structure, including also the scrotum. So next we will look into what is the function of every structure that form the male reproductive system. So you have to remember this one is urinary bladder, seminal vesicle, and then prostate gland. Yeah, so you have to uh, see from both view, front view and also the side view of male reproductive system. And then this is a sperm duct that connected between testis and urethra. And then urethra, yeah, the channel that release urine from the urinary bladder. Next is scrotum that protect testis and testis in which. So you have to remember that testis is a place in which sperm is produced. So when sperm produced in testis, so it will be flow through the sperm duct and then go into this inter section and then go into the urethra and will be released through the penis and then penis. So this is the main structure inside the male reproductive system. So below here is a explanation about the parts and its function for every structure explained above. So seminal vesicle secretes nutritional fluid for the sperm. So seminal vesicle secretes nutritional fluid for the sperm. Urethra, a channel to discharge sperm and urine from the body. So you can see urethra is a, a channel to discharge sperm and urine from the body. Sperm duct transports sperm from the testis to the urethra inside the body. Penis transfer sperms into the vagina of the female during copulation. Copulation is a intercourse, sexual intercourse. Scrotum. The function is holds and protects the testis. Testis produces male gametes, that is sperms, and male sex hormone. Prostate gland secrete fluid which contains nutrients and protect sperm cell. So if you can see from here, prostate glands secrete fluid. Seminal vesicle also secrete fluid. So this fluid that come from the seminal vesicle and also prostate gland will be mixed together with sperm with sperm from the testis through the sperm duct and they will mix together three of this one will mix together at the interconnection here so the fluid from seminal vesicle 
will be secretes here will be produced and then the prostate gland also will produce or secrete a semi uh, a fluid and also the sperm that come from the sperm duct will mix together here and then all this one we will call it as a semen yeah so this semen that consists of sperm fluid from seminal vesicle and also from prostate gland so they mix together and then we will call it semen and will be produced through the penis now we will proceed to female reproductive system so if you see from here this is the, the diagram to show the female reproductive system also at the center of the female body so, okay the organ that involve in this female reproductive system as you can see here is this is a fallopian tube okay same view so this is the front view and then this is a side view okay so this is a fallopian tube this is ovary so fallopian tube have two side here at the left and the right side so ovary also have at this both side left and right next is uterus so this is uterus this is cervix and this is a vagina so this is the all the structure of female reproduction system that consists of fallopian tube ovary uterus cervix and vagina so what is the function of every structure that form female reproductive system we can see from this table fallopian tube place where fertilization between sperm and ovum occurs so you must remember fallopian tube is a place where fertilization between sperm and ovum occurs so you must remember what is the meaning of fertilization that we have learned before ovary produces female gamete that is ovum and also female sex hormones uterus or womb place where the embryo develops and grows cervix produces mucus to enable sperms to swim into the uterus vagina receive sperms and as a channel through which a baby is born so we can see from here womb or uterus is a place for the embryo to develop and grows become a baby before it will be channel through vagina so the development of baby inside the mother's womb occur at uterus so remember again where is the location of uterus so here is the location of uterus so baby will be developed here and that's why we can see this part when baby become the growth of baby develop so it will expand so the expansion occur at this part that is uterus after we have learned about the structure of male and female reproductive system and its function now we will look into the 
next learning objective that is we want to learn about the physical changes that occur during puberty so what is the meaning of puberty in bm puberty means akil balik so akil balik as you learn in pendidikan islam so means here that you have reached certain point of development in human from early stages means that before before this you are a child or a children so now you become adolescent so puberty is the early stage of the maturity of the reproductive system before this you are a children now you become adolescent yeah? the starting point of become uh, adulthood okay so adolescents who have reached puberty will experience growth and change emotionally physically and physiologically so all these changes will be experienced by every human being so because we will have a development from baby and now after that become a children and then become adolescent and then become matured or become adulthood so what is the physical changes that occur during puberty so if you look into this dialogue between uh, son and father so father will explain about his experience when having these all changes during puberty so we will look what is the changes that will be experienced by all of the boys and girls during puberty boy normally reach puberty at approximately 14 to 17 years old meanwhile girls reach puberty earlier than boys which is between 10 to 12 years old so what exactly happened during these changes so we will look into every male and female so we look into the female first okay so what happened to the male as uh, what happened to the boy during the physical changes of puberty so the first one boys vocal cord enlarge voice becomes deeper body mustache and beard begin to grow hair grows on the face armpit and chest while for the girls breasts will grow hips become firm and broader hair grows on the armpit and next what will happen to the reproductive organ testes will start to produce sperm and also sex hormones means that before this during childhood testes will not produce sperm until reach puberty so after you have reached puberty testes will start to produce sperm and sex hormone that's why you have undergo these physical changes hair grows at a at pubic region penis and scrotum will enlarge for girls the reproductive organ ovaries produce ova and sex hormones so same with the boys the reproductive organ will only produce ovum and sex hormone after they reach puberty hair grows at pubic region and for girls menstrual cycle will begin so this is the changes that occur during puberty for both boys and girls 
Now we go to the comparison between the male and female gametes. So this is the third learning objective that you have to learn in subtopic 4.2. So after you have learned about the physical changes during the puberty and also the structure of the male and female reproductive system, so we look into more details about the gamete itself for male and female. So male gametes and female gametes will play an important role in the reproductive system because this is the main part of the process that involves to produce offspring. So now we will look into the male and female gamete. So as you know, male gamete is called sperm and sperm is the smallest cell in the male's body and it shapes is like a tadpole so you can see from here this is the shape of sperm so sperm will have head inside the head is nucleus so this is nucleus so this nucleus play an important role because as as you learn in the cell nucleus play a main role to control the activity of cell so in nucleus same function to control the activity of the sperm and inside nucleus contain chromosome and all the DNA or hereditary information to transfer to the offspring so the middle piece here the body of the sperm and also tail so this tail function to make sure that the sperm can move to the in to the part of the female reproductive system okay next ovum ovum is a female gametes as you know produced in the ovary is the largest cell in the female's body so the structure is like this okay this one is ovum the largest cell in the female's body consists of gel layer nucleus cytoplasm and cell membrane so same thing nucleus will contain dna that carries out hereditary information so will be transferred this information genetic information into the offspring so when this sperm and ovum combine together in the process of fertilization so it will form after that development to become a baby so next this is the diagram this is the diagram for the real ovum and this is sperm now we will look into the more extra knowledge here the head of a sperm contains nucleus that carries genetic and hereditary information to be transferred to the offspring the tail enables the sperm to move or swim in the semen inside the, vagi the vagina uterus and fallopian tube of the female reproductive system the normal numbers of sperm release is 60 million per cubic centimeter so this is what will happen yeah, to the sperm when entering into the female reproductive system because sperm have tail so it will move through the vagina uterus and then at the fallopian tube 
as you have learned before, fallopian tube is a place for the fertilization between sperm and ovum. So next is ovum is a spherical in shape with a diameter of about 0.1 millimeter. Same thing, nucleus contains genetic and hereditary information to be transferred to the offspring. Ovum is not able to move by itself. So when it will, when being produced by the ovary, so ovum will be stay maintained at the uh, place means that at the at the fallopian tube, waiting for the sperm to come. A normal woman usually produces one ovum per month. So this diagram, this figure shows the comparison between sperm and ovum. So we can look into this one. So the similarity between sperm and ovum is carries genetic information, the most important thing. And this is a sexual reproductive cell. Okay, sperm able to move, produced by testis, male gamete, smallest cell in the male's body. While ovum cannot move, produced by ovary, this is female gamete, and the largest cell in the female's body. So this is the comparison between sperm and ovum. So next is uh, for your extra knowledge. Yeah. So ovum can live up to two days after being released from the ovary, while sperms can live up to three or four days after entering into the female reproductive system. So this is the extra knowledge that you must know. Next is, before we finish for this subtopic, so this is the formative practice 4.2. So I want all of you to do this exercise in your notes book and make sure you answer all these questions in notebook. Okay, that's all for this subtopic. Next class, we will proceed to 4.3. That is the menstrual cycle that occur in a female reproductive system. Thank you.